Hey everybody, welcome back to Laptop Seniors again. One of those things when you travel that it comes up over and over and over again is the problem of you show up in a city and you don't have a phone. You could take the roaming with the big charges, but most people don't really like to do that. And you'll show up and you'll be at an airport and you go like, well, how do I get a taxi? Or how do I get here? How do I get there? What kind of information? You want a phone, basically, it's like, what if you're home and all of a sudden your phone disappeared? You'd be lost. Well, it's the same way, even worse though, when you're traveling. So one of the things you want to do is get a SIM card in whatever new country you're going. So I'm going to take you through that because we showed up here in Panama City and we had a lot of appointments early in the morning the next day. Needed to get an Uber, but with no data on a phone, how you do that? Like you're totally stuck. So we're going to go to a mall and I'm going to show you, you know, what's in tailed and take you through it and talk about it and all that sort of stuff. So let's get to that. As I mentioned, we had early meetings and that got compounded by the fact that we were getting in later on a Sunday afternoon and the stores and malls and stuff like that, they start closing at six and we landed like at four. So it was a scramble. Because of that, and we were being in an Airbnb this time, uh, we decided to skip the first two days of the Airbnb and go to the Multiplaza Mall Marriott Courtyard. You know, so, and it's attached right to the mall. So we checked in there for two nights so that we'd be fast access to the phone stores for our appointments the next morning. So we went into the mall, which is a great mall. It's gigantic. It may be the biggest mall I've ever seen in my life. And I've been to a lot of malls. Anyway, we did it scrambling, tried to find the phone companies. They're all in a row. And uh, it was really easy to find them, chose one and all of that sort of stuff and got it done. Even ran into the same lady who had actually got us SIM cards back in August when we were here. So that was nice. And she spoke, you know, a little bit of English, enough to get by and using translators, Google Translate and all that sort of stuff and the little Spanish that we knew. We got through it. We had a bunch of problems um, because the phones didn't quite work exactly the same like the last time. Last time there was no problems. This time we did. But anyway, it got done and everything was fine. One of the things I really suggest if you're going to a foreign country, I did this at home before we even got on the airplane, write out exactly what you want. Like, you know, say it point blank. Uh, here's my phone. I'm looking for a new SIM card with this plan. And you would get this plan by going online to the phone companies in that particular country that you're going to and look through what they sell and pick a plan so that you can, you know, you're talking apples to apples. You can tell them the plan that you want, seven days, 15 days, 30 days, 10 gig, unlimited gig, five gig, whatever. You, you wanna be able to tell them exactly what you want. So what I did was I went to Google Translate, them translate it into Spanish so there's, you know, no discrepancy, and I printed it out so I had it in my hand. Luckily for us though, we ran into the, the same lady and she was good just like the last time. But if that didn't happen, I had the paper. Before we go any further, let me explain what a SIM card actually is. There are two systems for mobile phones in the world, CDMA, I don't know what that stands for, I, I did at one point, I forget, and SIM, which is SIM, that's what everybody calls. Pretty much the entire world runs on SIM cards except North America. There may be a few other countries that do the CDMA. Like if you're in Canada, Bell does CDMA. If you are in the US, Verizon would be that. Everybody else does SIM cards. And usually when you see the cheaper providers um, in different countries, they almost always run on SIMs because they can just sell you a SIM card. So what's a SIM card? Let's go through that right now. So these, these are SIM cards. There are five SIM cards for five different countries. We travel a lot. Um, and they look, you know, basically, you know, they'll have like the you know, logo of the company on it on one side. And usually some numbers because each of these are numbered and so that the phone provider can match up with this SIM. Because this thing holds all the data that the phone works on. If you're on a CDMA system, the phone itself, the hardware, has all the data, okay? But that's why you can change these so easily because all the data, your personal stuff, is sitting on this thing. So if when you pull it out and stick a new one in and sign up, the, the phone is good because you've just given it all new data. That's basically the premise. And, you know, and here's all the chip stuff that makes it work, you know, sitting on this side. Hopefully you can see that, okay? Now, what you do is, uh, you, can, you can use one of you know, these, just a paper clip always works fine, 
or you get usually one of these things which are really nice these almost always come if you buy a new phone and by the way the phone has to be unlocked you need an unlocked phone if you have a locked phone you can't do this because you'll be locked to the providers for instance if you're in Canada you would be locked to Rogers or if you know or AT&T in the United States if you bought a phone plan so say you have a two-year phone plan and you know you've, you're eight months into paying it off over the 24 month payment you're going to be locked they don't want you leaving you know and all sticking a different sim or something in and going with somebody else while you know they've given you a deal on the phone so they're going to lock you down you can ask them to unlock it because you're going away they may or may not do it but after you've paid for the phone off entirely your two-year run is over with or you just bought it directly unlocked like like this phone, all the phones we buy, we buy them directly from Apple, unlocked. So they've never ever tied to any provider because of what we do. So anyway, so along the edge here, if you look, you'll see a little tiny little hole, which I don't know if you can see or not. Usually not on that side, it's almost always on this side. So yeah, let me see if I can kind of move this around a little bit where the light hits it. I don't know if you can see that little thing right there. It's a little hole and you stick this gizmo or the paper clip into the hole and then you push on it and there's the SIM card. It'll come out and this is its own little holder. And there's the holder for the, and it's got a little notch on the one end so it makes it easy to actually line the card up. You can't do it incorrectly. It won't fit in any other way. Let me see if I can put this back in and give you an idea what it feels like and see, you know, it looks like to put one back in so you can put it back in the phone when they give you a new one. Although, if you're at a phone company, they'll do that for you. They'll just hand you the phone and it'll be working fine. So you line that little, let me see if I can, hopefully that's in focus. You line that little notch up against the notch on there. You put it in and again, I won't be able to show you, but this is totally flush. So if, I, if I'm running my fingers like that, I can't feel the card at all, which means it's super smooth and then you just basically find the slot, stick it back in. Come on. The phone itself will go searching and then it finds its company and you're good to go. So that's basically how this works. Now some caveats that you kind of have to w worry about. I, I would definitely do this at a phone company if you are in a different country because the language is probably going to be a problem for you. And if you just get one of these SIM cards, which you can at like a, you know, a grocery store or a 7-Eleven or whatever, they're not going to be phone people. So you want to go to like a phone kiosk where they sell phones and they're dealing with phones. And that's mainly what they do or the phone company store itself. And they'll usually for sure at the phone company set it up completely. You know, if there's any problems like, you know, you can get problems depending on where you are. For instance, I had a red pocket phone uh, SIM in, in the United States and I tried it on four different phones and it would not work. Four different iPhones. And the, one of the problems was for some reason the phone itself would work. You could call, you could text, but the data would not work. And they even gave me another SIM to try it again and it still would not work. I switched to this company, this little blue one here, Tello. Stuck a new SIM in, boom, right out of the gate. Instant, it was instantly totally fine. So you have to be aware of stuff like that, that you can have a problem. Also, if you have an iPhone, I found out when we were down here, because our iMessaging will not work down here, I thought, well, maybe it's because of the company down here, but it's not. If you look on Apple support on their webpage, for some reason, iPhones have a problem putting in one SIM, you know, into, you know, taking one SIM out, putting another SIM in, even in your own country, it has a hard time figuring out what's going on. The phone will work, everything will be working fine, but iMessaging won't work because that's a proprietary thing with Apple and it gets confused. And sometimes it may be later on after an update, it might kick on or it might not. So, you know, that's a little iffy, but almost always, typically, well, they won't sell you if it doesn't. <laughs> if you go into a phone company in a different country, they'll get the thing working hand you the phone and then you have a local number. You will have a local Panama or France or England or whatever phone number. Life without a SIM card in a phone, you're lost, right? Uh, hopefully uh, got some information out of that to help you out. 
so that doesn't actually happen to you. One other thing here in Panama, which is different than a lot of countries, um, there's no CDMA phones here. It's all SIM cards. If you don't have that, your phone isn't going to work down here, even if you had a roaming plan. You need a SIM card. So if you're in Europe, in most countries, they have SIM cards. It'll be fine. You just need to have an unlocked phone. And you have a local Panamanian or any other country's number, uh, depending, of course, on what country you're in. So that's it for cell phones. Hopefully that helped. If you like what we're doing, subscribe to the channel. Laptop Seniors really appreciate it. And until the next one, see ya. Come back and see us again soon.